Hello, Igor. Welcome back. I know last time we done the interview was about five months ago, and at the time you were making one thousand dollars per month. And now I got a message from you uh, very yeah. recently saying that you've scaled up quite a bit and some other changes in your life as well for the positive. So I look forward to covering that during this interview. But yeah, let's begin with how has everything been? How are you doing? Doing great, man. Thank you again for reaching out. I'm much more successful uh, and much happier in life. Uh, as I said in the previous interview, I was hoping to scale it to three grand. So finally did it and look forward to scaling it even more with more, I would say, stubbornness and more determination in my business and working in the content creation campus fully, just focusing on one campus. So yeah, life is great. Perfect. So that's great to hear. You said 3000 month for each. So congratulations on that. And for people who are skeptical, would you have any kind of proof to show for that? Yeah, sure. So currently I'm working, uh, I previously uh, on the interview, I was working on music videos for smaller artists and clients. Now I've scaled to working with large companies that work on creating makeup and cleaning products for factories. So currently I'm being paid a hundred dollars a day making photos and videos using AI and artificial intelligence. And this is a, one of the screenshots with rubles. So every single day, sometimes every two days, I get a hundred, sometimes 150, uh, every day. And it amounts, if you work for 30 days straight, you get up to, uh, up to already two and a half, sometimes 3000 a month, as well as on the side, this money gets invested into stocks and crypto and with the recent crypto bull market uh made a significant amount uh, of money especially in stocks uh in i invest into the russian economy i don't really am capable invest into investing into the u.s market for reasons but due to recent events sad events as well the market has skyrocketed up and i made just a thousand us uh in the previous month just from the market all right. Okay. So a few questions then. First, you said you moved on to working with larger companies. So how did you acquire them as clients? How did that come about? I focused on Professor Pope's strategy of cold emails and performance outreaches. So instead of just messaging or DMing via social media, I focused on acquiring emails for, for the either CEOs or executive officers of the companies using the tools provided in HU. So in HU, uh, they taught me everything I need to know, uh, where to reach out, who to reach out, how to find them. And I would structure a cold email, reach out to the CEOs and offer them a my services of video creation for social media or content creation for their websites, their blogs, because in Russia here, it's uh, a little bit less popular to make a lot of viral videos to promote the product. It's more of a closed market, especially in the makeup and uh, cleaning products range. It's a very closed market because everything is nationalized. So here it's more of a creating video and pitching to create videos for the closed client group. So to, uh, for all the festivals, all of the competitions, cause there are a lot of these, even in the big companies. And that's how I acquired two retainers that are currently paying me the hundred us a, a day. Uh, and I just create, create content for them. They just call me up say, Hey, need X amount of content. And I produce it way faster than if I was not learning AI. In HU. Okay. Uh, I want a bit more on that. So you reach out to them. How did they respond? Did you get on a call with them? How did you end up closing them? And what services are you actually offering them? So uh, I reach out to about 10 clients every single day, about oh, 10 prospects, apologies to every single day. Not everyone answers. Of course I get, I think one or two answers every single week. And only one out of maybe 50 answer and agree to go onto a sales call, which is classic sales call through zoom or discord depends. Sometimes it's over the phone. 
Usually it's over the phone. And over the phone, they ask me uh, very simple questions of what do I offer? What is my service specifically? And I explain uh, with rarely to no small talk, just that I offer content creation services for social media and specifically for clients of the niche of cosmetics and uh, cleaning products. So product shots, generation of uh, AI content with products in them, uh, replacing backgrounds, logo creation, so everything related to this niche. And if they like my pitch, then the call usually takes about 15 minutes and they agree for a, let's just say like a free value. So they send me some PNGs of their product and they say, we need to generate X amount of products, we need X amount of shots done in X amount of days. And I completed it, then they already ask for an invoice. That's how you start working. Okay. Makes sense. And since you said you've been mainly focusing on CC plus AI, how has that actually evolved over the past five months? What kind of new content is in there that's been beneficial to you? Well, the campus has grown significantly since I first entered. And at first I thought I was proficient, as I said in the previous interview that I, I thought I was good with editing, but now with new implementations that Pro Professor Pope has done to the campus, with all the new AI tools, with all the new knowledge, with the, all the challenges, all of the chats in the, uh, and how fast paced it's going, I'm learning new skills every single day. Uh, things with uh, third party tools that are specifically focused on product shots, for example, or in real life AI implementation. So previously, for example, AI was just a style in a sense. I, that's how I would explain it. So it's a cool niche to for a client to just make their product stand out and unique. But now AI is fully utilized to make products or content faster. So now it's a indispensable tool that is just required to stand out for any client or any company that wants to actually survive anywhere in the world. And mm -hmm. with the introduction of Sora uh, from OpenAI, this will skyrocket it even more. And I know that HU is all into that and Pope is very interested in Sora and learning all about it. So I think all the students in HU will be the first users, professional users mm -hmm. in AI implementation of this product? Uh, for myself as well, and I'm sure for some of the viewers who haven't heard about Sora before, what is it? Sora is a video, a prompt to video generation software produced by OpenAI, the same company that made ChatGPT. So you use text, what's called a prompt, you type in a sentence, a paragraph of what you want, and the program Sora will then visualize it through algorithms and through image generation into a realistic AI image. And Sora is a very unique product in the sense that it focuses on realistic generation. So AI usually generates a very cartoon, stylistic, hyper-realistic image, but this is specifically a product that focuses on as real as can be. So you type in uh, something like elephants walking across ice and it will genuinely generate elephants walking across ice. It will look realistic. The lighting will be realistic. The texture even will be realistic. It is a new step. And this means that companies will no longer need to pay millions and millions of dollars to produce, uh, to hire ad agencies. They can just pay OpenAI a little bit of money and produce high quality ads for their products. That's why it's a game changer. Okay. That reminds me, I have seen video about it before. I think it was on the train. That was one of the first viral videos about it, right? Yep. Something about, yeah. Um, okay. So thank you for the rundown. And uh, I wonder what else is there to say for in those five months, if you were to give a breakdown from what you remember, maybe month by month since our last interview, what other things are there to update on? So you spoke quite a bit about the new the new clients you've acquired. But yeah, does anything else come to mind in that time span? Well, you gave me a challenge back then. You said five grand, which I think that's the main lesson is that I've seen so many students in HU scale from 
nothing to even one student, I think in a parallel campus sold a company for like 2 million US, that's crazy. And this to me uh, shows that I can do much better. So even though I scaled from basically nothing to three grand a month in a year, I can do way better than this. So it's three grand is nothing compared to five or 10 or the 2 million that that G did. So this only makes me work harder in every aspect and upgrade all of my, all of my characteristics as a man. Uh, in terms of success, I think what generally I feel like I succeeded in is the training aspect. As I said in the previous interview, I weighed like 60, I think 69 to 72 kilograms. Now I weigh almost 80 kilograms. So that is definitely completed. But since this is money talk about HU, then I must do much better than three grand. In the next five months, I need to do not five grand, but make my first 10 grand in the next five months. That's the goal. It doesn't have to be just money talk. This is, especially for the follow-up interviews, is about you and your progress. So mm. substantial. Uh, gained somewhere around 10 kg and I'm guessing mostly muscle mass. So again, that's a big deal. I'm sure people start looking at you different at that point. You start getting maybe more respect. And just subconsciously, when people deal with you, it's probably a different uh, perception they have of you when they see that. Because it just shows your discipline and commitment to yourself and your body, which can also be translated to something like work. Uh, so yeah. Okay, a bit of a ramble there. Then what do your parents think about you making 3000 a month now? Where I remember in the previous interview, you said in Moscow, you can expect to make about 1000 a month as a banker or like a quite prestigious job. So yeah, you're making three times that. What do your parents think about that? My parents supported uh, my uh, entrance into HU from the start. They are very, um, they both grew up very poor. And for them to, when they heard me just hustling through some internet course, they said, that's great because we don't understand anything. And you are, as they said, and I quote, you're the future. We are not players in this game anymore. So we know traditional finance, traditional uh, income streams. We don't know the internet. This is your domain. So we will support you. So I never had the issue of unsupportive parents. In fact, they only agreed to support me and are helping me currently with finding more clients. They're promoting my services everywhere. So my parents, they love it. They are very happy and satisfied and uh, I support them in any way, shape or form I can. So I'm doing this for them partially. So they, they're really supportive. I wanted That's, to make a quick point, sorry for interrupting, about the previous question uh, about skills. In terms of uh, working out, it really helped me with asking for more money and upselling my product. Because I think that's the reason I may I scaled from 1K a month to 3K a month is just pure brutal determination and not afraid being afraid of clients to ask them for more money and asking for raises. And I think that's maybe could be important to the students watching is that roadblock of being a little bit afraid to ask for more money and upselling that should be broken and should be just defeated immediately. You should ask for more cash always. Mm -hmm. All right. uh, and I was going to add, it's amazing to have parents like yours who are supportive and open-minded in that way that they even say that, yeah, you're the future, you know, much better what you're doing with technology, maybe than us. Um, just in that way, again, it's like, what more can you ask for from your parents? Absolutely. So awesome. And any kind of lifestyle changes in that, in those five months, uh, have you been spending that money or anything, or have you just been saving it to try invest? What's been the plan there? Oh, I've, I've been spending, <laughs> I've been spending it. I've been, I've, I have a rule of investing 50% of my income. Uh, so that still stands, but because it's a significant bump in income, I've just find myself sitting in a cafe, for example, and eating a steak and I'm just, well, okay. I ended up here now. I, I haven't done this in two months ago. That's weird. But then I, and at first I panic, 
a little bit. I, I do admit, it's like, oh, I'm spending this money on, on some steak. I don't need it. But then I realize I can always make it back. I have the skills learned from HU that will never go away. These are real life skills that can be, if, if I lose everything, if you want to lose the internet connection or my HU subscription, I know these skills that I can restore all my, uh, all the business that I've already did. Uh, so that's the most important thing. And that's, but I've more actually been investing into my physique and investing into the, uh, my social status, my social media, which I'm trying to launch a course and actually start to, as Tate says, start earning money from what I know, not from what I do. All right. All right. Um, and having that kind of mindset, knowing if you, for some reason, were to end up losing what you've currently built, you can rebuild it because you have the skill set now to do so. You know what you're doing. It won't be starting from scratch anymore, like worst, worst case. And having that definitely gives you another sense of confidence as well. An additional layer of confidence. Okay. Um, is there anything else we've missed? Maybe any kind of mentality changes that you haven't mentioned in those five months that you can um, make a note on or no? Yeah, I can make a note on there. Uh, these five months were probably the hardest in terms of let's just say keeping consistent and disciplined because due to extra, let's just say external factors in my country, as I think everyone heard about the terror attacks and other stuff, which I won't discuss in detail, but it takes a toll on both people and my family, especially because uh, like, thank God no one went to that concert. Uh, it's a fairly well-known place in my city and uh, I, my family goes there and visits there often. So thank God that didn't happen. But this takes a toll and it takes a toll as well on the financial side of things because uh, prospects and clients and companies get very terrified and they either start to close down their businesses or they start to attempt to leave the country. So sometimes I would have a month of just no work at all. And I would have to improvise and go back to HU and relearn certain skills, maybe visit the freelance camp, uh, sorry, the client acquisition campus to find other ways of finding clients, maybe fix my outreaches more. So there will be days and even months, maybe even weeks of just stagnation. But the important part is to just keep working and have a routine, have some sort of checklist written on paper or on a computer that you have to complete every day. And as my father said, when I was telling him that I had an issue in February, I didn't have any clients. He said, they will come, uh, just keep going and they will just continue adding up. And eventually all 50 of them will just write you instantly. That That's exactly what happened. Like in uh, March, which was my highest ever month, all, I think I had like 10 or 12 clients reach out to me instantly and they said, Hey, we, we need work now instantly. We're back. And, I was, and now I had to figure out how to schedule all these clients and how much everyone's going to pay. And I called my dad and I said, okay, that, that, this is your fault. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> they laughed. He said, you, you, why, why were you worried? I don't understand. It's fine. Mm -hmm. We've survived worse. <laughs> mm -hmm. Very cool. Uh, and in cases like that, how would you scale? your company uh, are there ways you can outsource things yeah absolutely i'm currently thinking of hiring one assistant to because i have a bunch of small tasks that are just time wasters so it's either some aspect of the sending the emails part so i know how to prospect my job is to close now so i would already uh start to look for some a person to do lead generation that would be simpler uh, something related towards creating thumbnails for the YouTube videos. Also, it's a time waster, even though I know the skill and I'm capable of doing it, I would much prefer to have more time in editing, uh, my videos myself, because I haven't found yet another person who's as good at editing. I know that currently in the campus, uh, I think I'm allowed to talk about this, uh, Pope is thinking of creating a new system when it comes to hiring and actually creating sort of a 
job platform out of the campus. So there are big moves happening for anyone who hasn't joined yet. Uh, you will be able to work with the students and complete each other's assignments and actually make cash. So that is something that I'm looking forward to and uh, focusing more on the craft and not on the all the bureaucratic stuff. So that's, I think, one of the ways I could scale it. And otherwise, in terms of scaling, is to just ask for more, more cash, more paychecks, find higher paying clients. I'm looking at a different niche, also in the product industry, but a much high paying and local client that, for example, how can I explain this? Focus on finding clients that service rich people. So it could be, for example, um, very expensive rugs. Rich people, for some reason, like rugs, uh, and they buy them and pay millions and millions of dollars for these rugs to be custom made, customly sewn, and then sold for ridiculous amounts of money. So it's only great to promote and make videos about this type of product to make more money. That could be scaled. Very interesting. <clears throat> uh, okay, so I guess coming up to my last few questions. Sure. So for future plans again i know i would have asked this before as well but just to reiterate what are your plans for short term medium term and long term well i remember after the first interview you asked me this question i instantly wrote these questions down and had them written on a constant reminder that blasts me every day to just remind me you have to complete these and the short term now for me is to get uh 10 grand into my stock portfolio. So that already will completely, that's one of the goals in the short, ter short term. That will at least uh, give a passive amount of income so I don't have to worry about food and focus on, for example, business. The second thing is to defeat the YouTube not allowing me to monetize and Rumble not allowing me to monetize because I'm Russian situation. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be a bunch of flying, to countries maybe making a bunch of bank cards because I am losing out on significant income <laughs> because one of my videos went very viral and if I'm calculated it correctly I can make an extra 200 to 500 bucks every month just from doing nothing so that's that's a loss and otherwise I've reached my short-term goals uh, I thought in a year making basically a uh, thousand a month that was the short term goal, but I already destroyed that completely. So I think the next goal is to make, start making 10 grand a month. That's the medium goal. And it's totally possible seeing what's happening in the campuses and switching my uh, targets towards um, companies overseas. That's, I think, the medium term goal. And long term goal stays the same. It is, of course, becoming a millionaire, buying a house. Would really like an. You know, Audi RS7. When Tate bought that car, I, I was jealous. He has two, I think, yeah? Potentially. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> Maybe he doesn't... Okay. So, yeah, that's the same thing as ever, to just be successful and uh, maybe even start a family. Who knows? I think that could be a nice thing. Yeah, sounds very good. And I know I asked this before as well, but since you attribute so much of this to Hustlers University. For people who are thinking it's a scam for the $50, what advice would you have to them? Oh, man. <laughs> well, pre my previous advice was just try it and figure out if it's right for you. But now my advice would be if you can not do some basic research and understand that there are hundreds of people on Rocky's channel that show their success, even small success from making just a thousand a month or 3000 a month to crazy super people that make millions per month already or ten, hundreds of thousands per month. And you are afraid to spend 50 bucks to just look through and learn the same skills, then you deserve eternal slavery <laughs> because I, I don't know. There's so many crazy things happening, so much chaos in the world. 2024 is ridiculous as a year. And if you are not seeking out a brotherhood or some semblance of structure, 
within, for example, the internet, which is Hustlers University, then I don't know. You, I don't, I don't understand people like this anymore. I relating to this question, I've lost a couple of friends during these five months just because of this, because of all of the craziness that's been happening overseas in politics in in my country. I would ask people, let, let's build something together. Let's, I will buy subscriptions for all of you. Let's start making some moves and. Uh, and they would just decide, no, I want to play video games on the computer. I, I just want to sit there and just not do anything. I, I can't speak to these people anymore. I'm too focused on making myself better and my family better and my loved ones better. I, I don't have time for this uh, passive behavior, in a sense. The world is moving way too fast for me to think about people who are just rejecting uh, help and free help, in a sense, or almost free help. 50 bucks is nothing, even to a person in Moscow, which is the most sanctioned country in the world currently. Uh, Russia, sorry, not Moscow. So if here people are afraid of spending, which is 5,000 rubles, which is 50 bucks, then okay, stay broke mm -hmm. at this point. Fair enough. <clears throat> but yeah, it's great to have spoken to you again and just to see the progress you're making in every realm whether it's physically the 10 kilograms mentally, as you said, how much you've evolved and free extra income as well in a place that is on hard mode, quote unquote, compared to other places, <laughs> just because of all the restrictions there. So yeah, you're for sure doing very well. And the goals you have are very justifiable, definitely reachable. I completely believe in that. And it's been great to, interact with you again and I look forward to the follow-up and just how much more you'll progress in that time and now for people who want to find out more about you or contact you where can they do so uh, my youtube channel uh, nano Joel I think you'll leave it in the description say uh, my instagram is Igor Anash here I, I just rarely I post photos just there of lifestyle but my main is uh, my youtube channel where I speak about uh, editing, finance, and also fitness. Currently working on the course that will be out soon. And that is the main way you reach out. If you need any, let's just say business, then my email is also going to be on the channel. Okay. And yeah, those will be in the description of the video. And Igor, as I said, it was great speaking to you. Look forward Likewise, to the next sir. one. And until then, wish you all the best. You too. Thank you so much.